Yes, good morning, students. Let's have a prayer before we start. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of life we are still possessing. Thank you for the students all over the country. I thank you for the kind of wisdom you have given them. I thank you for the life and for the protection you have offered them from the time they broke off from schools due to coronavirus up to this time that they are still safe. I bless your name and I thank you for having protected them. And I pray that you keep protecting them till they are through with their academic journey. In Jesus' name, I've been able to pray. Amen. So uh, students across the country, we are going to look at the three component systems. And when we say three component systems, this is where uh, we are going to have uh, uh, a solute. And this solute will be introduced into uh, a mixture of two immiscible liquids which are in contact. So you want to see what really happens when you bring a solute uh, into a mixture of two immiscible liquids. So if these are two immiscible liquids. Let me say that this is immiscible liquid A and this is an immiscible liquid B and you are bringing in a solute S. So when you bring in a solute S in that mixture of the immiscible liquids, this S will distribute itself Okay, it is going to distribute or it will partition itself between the two solvents until equilibrium is reached. Remember, the topic is the phase of physical equilibrium. It will distribute itself within this miscible mixture until an equilibrium is established. And when the equilibrium is established, uh, by the time the equilibrium is established, it means that this S has completely distributed itself between A and B. But you need to know that it distributes itself between these two solvents, but it does not dissociate in them. And still, it does not change the molecular state. So it keeps in the state the way it was introduced and does not react with these two. And these two must be or should be immiscible with each other. So in other words, when we say distribution of a solute between two immiscible sol uh, solvents in contact, just look at a solute, which solute can be a solid or a liquid being shaken with two immiscible solvents which are in contact at a given temperature, okay? And this one, this solute introduced should be soluble in both of these, okay? So this solute would distribute itself or would partition itself between those two solvents until equilibrium is established. And that equilibrium, the ratio of the concentration of this solute to sol uh, solvent A to the concentration of the solute uh, in solvent B should be or is always a constant at a fixed temperature. So that one will take us to the stating or to the statement of partition law. The partition law or what you may call the distribution law. Distribution law. As the name suggests, it is a law. So laws keep uh, the sense holding. So when we are stating the distribution law, we say that a solute soluble you need two immiscible liquids, soluble in the two immiscible liquids, or in two immiscible solvents, let's use solvents in two immiscible solvents, in two immiscible solvents in contact will distribute itself. We distribute itself between the two, between the two solvents or liquids between the two solvents. 
such that the ratio, such that the ratio of its concentration in one solvent to concentration in the other at equilibrium is constant at a fixed temperature provided the solute remains in the same molecular state. Uh, I mean the same molecular state in both solvents. A solid soluble, that solid should be soluble in two immiscible solvents, which are in contact will distribute itself between the two solvents such that the ratio of its concentration, okay? Such that the ratio of its concentration in one solvent to the concentration in the other at equilibrium is a constant at a fixed temperature provided the solute remains in the same molecular state. So whatever that I was discussing here is what we put in the law. You have to consider two immiscible liquids in contact so that when you introduce in a solute, that solute will distribute itself between those two solvents. So that at equilibrium, the ratio of its concentration in one of the solvents to the concentration uh, or to its concentration in another solvent is constant, provided that solute remains in the same molecular state. So that is what we are trying to, uh, that is what we are trying to, to, to bring out, okay? That's what we are trying to bring out. Um, to go further beyond this, um, that constant, that constant ratio, Okay, is what we know as partition coefficient or distribution coefficient, Kd. Okay, so that constant ratio is what we call partition coefficient or distribution coefficient or distribution constant, KD, abbreviated as it, KD. Now, we want to define this KD. Or we want to define the partition or distribution coefficient. Partition or distribution coefficient. KD definition. Now, this KD is the constant ratio because we say that the ratio of the concentration of a solute in one solvent to the concentration of the solute in another solvent is a constant. So when we're defining partition or distribution co coefficient, we shall say is the constant ratio of molar concentration, okay? constant ratio of molar concentrations of a solute dissolved in two immiscible solvents
dissolving two immiscible solvents in contact and when in equilibrium has been established at a fixed temperature and the molecular state of the solid is the same. in both solvents. Constant ratio of molar concentrations of a solute dissolved in two immiscible solvents in contact. And when equilibrium has been established that a fixed temperature and molecular state of the solute is the same in both solvents. So that is what we call partition or distribution coefficient, KD. What I'm trying to mean is that if a solute X is a second between the two immiscible liquids A and B, between A and B, if solute X is a second between the two liquids or solvents A and B, we're trying to say that the concentration of X in A to concentration of X in B is equals to a constant. Which constant is what we call K? The ratio of concentration of a solute in one solvent, the concentration of a solute in another solvent is a constant, KD. So this value of KD, is independent of the volume of the solvents used and also is independent of the mass of the solute used. It should only be depending on temperature, as we shall see, as we shall see. So uh, let's first calculate. Let me first give an example so that we understand the general idea about uh, distribution law then we are going to stretch experiments from where we shall start our discussion of questions. Okay. Um, well, let's, let's look at uh, an example. An example. This example will give us a general idea about distribution law. Ten grams of butanoic acid. was added to 100 cubic centimeters of water and shaken with the 150 cubic centimeters of ether at 25 degrees Celsius at equilibrium the mass of 
of butanoic acid that remained in the aqueous layer, that is the water layer, in the aqueous layer was 3.6 grams at a calculate the distribution coefficient of butanoic acid between one water and ether two ether and water then part B comment on the solubility of butanoic acid in water. Perhaps the solubility, rather comment on the solubility of butanoic acid in water. Now, this question, you needed to understand what it's all about. We have the mass of the solute, 10 grams. So in other words, my interpretation is this. You've got two layers. You've got the water layer and you've got the ether layer, you're adding 10 grams of butanoic acid. They are saying that at equilibrium, 3.6 had remained in the aqueous layer. So in the aqueous layer, there is 3.6 grams. So if the whole, if the whole solute added 10 grams, and 3.6 are remaining in the aqueous layer, then what is in the ether layer? In the ether layer will be 10 minus 3.6 grams. 10 grams minus 3.6. This one will give us the mass of the solute that, uh, uh, that is in the ether layer. And then there we can calculate. Another thing you should note is the volume, 10 grams, of butanic acid was added in 100 cubic centimeters of water. So water is 100 cubic centimeters uh, and shaken with 150 cubic centimeters of ether. So ether, we have gotten 150 cubic centimeters. So these, these volumes will enable us to get concentration because the concentration will be the mass over the volumes that will be giving us the concentration. Now, uh, for me to attempt this question, um, one, I need to first summarize what I'm given. Mass of butanoic acid is equals to 10 grams. Uh, mass of butanoic acid in aqueous layer, which aqueous layer is water, has given us 3.6 grams. So we need to get mass of butanoic acid in ether layer or the organic layer. And it will be 10 minus 3.6, which will give us 6.4 grams. 
Then from there, after we've gotten masses in each layer, then we need to get the concentration of butanoic acid. in water will be equaling to the mass in water, that is 3.6, over the volume in water as given as 100. Then the concentration of butanoic acid in ether will be equaling to the mass in ether out of the volume. So Roman one, uh, they wanted us to calculate KD of butanoic acid between water and ether. When they say between water and ether, what, what comes first, the solvent that comes first will be our numerator. So butanoic acid in water divided by concentration of butanoic acid in ether. Because by definition, we say that KD is the constant ratio showing the, con the, the concentration of the solute in a given solvent to concentration of, another, uh, of a solid state in another solvent. So the KD here is going to be 3.6 over 100 divided by 6.4 over 150. So this is 3.6 over 100 times the reciprocal 150 over 6.4. Okay, so this one will give you KD as 0 0.844 because you get 3.6 times 150 divided by 100 times 6.4. You get KD as 0.8. For four. Then for Roman 2, they want KD of butanoic acid between ether and water. So if they say between ether now, you'll begin with ether up, butanoic acid in ether out of concentration of butanoic acid in water. So in ether, it is going to be 6.4, 150 divided by 3.6 over 100. So this is going to be 6.4, 150 times 100 over 3.6, the reciprocal. So this is 64 divided by the product of this, and it's going to give you 1.855, as simple as that. Now, the part B question wants you to comment on the solubility of butanoic acid in water. You can see, um, when we begin with the water, the KD is small. When we begin with ether, the KD is high. It implies that, it is more soluble in ether than in water. So if they want us to comment on the solubility between uh, the solubility of butanoic acid in water, we shall simply say butanoic acid is less soluble in water than it is in ether. So part B we shall say butanoic acid is less soluble in water than it is in ether. In other words, you can see in ether it is 1.855 times soluble than in water. How do we come to, to, to that? Anyway, they just wanted this, a comment. But if you had to explain it further, we have a butanoic acid, concentration of butanoic acid in ether over, we have concentration of butanoic acid 
in ether over concentration of butanoic acid in water equaling to 1.855. Meaning if you cross multiply, the concentration of butanoic acid in ether is equals to 1.855 times the concentration of butanoic acid in water. That is it. So implying that, the fact that the butanoic acid concentration in ether is 1.855 times the concentration of butanoic acid in water, then butanoic acid is less soluble in water than in ether. Um, before I come to the end of this lesson, let's outline the limitations of this partition or distribution law. Limitations of partition or distribution law. The number one limitation is the temperature of the mixture should be kept constant. Temperature of the mixture should be kept constant. Two, also the solid should be soluble in both the solvents. The solute you're introducing should be soluble in two solvents. Three, the solute must not react. Solute must not react with either solvent. It must not react with either solvent. Another thing is that the solute should not circulate either solvent. Okay, solute should not saturate either solvent. Then the solid still must not dissociate, must not dissociate or associate in either solvent. It must not associate or dissociate in either solvent. In other words, it should remain in the same molecular state. So one can say the solvent should remain in the same molecular state in both solvents, all right? It must remain in the same molecular state in both solvents. So at this lesson gave us an introduction about partition coefficient, about distribution law. And uh, uh, our next time's lesson is going to give us a clue on the determination of the distribution coefficients of solids between two immiscible solvents in contact. So we shall look at the experiments that we can carry out to determine the partition coefficient of given solutes between two immiscible solvents in contact from where we shall have a lot of calculations and then we proceed. I wish you all the best. God bless you.